Okay, you are in the kitchen with Jelly007.com and his Ninja Foodie. And tonight, out of the Ninja Recipe Booklet, the Ninja Foodie Recipe Booklet that came with my foodie, I'm going to do a recipe that, if you watched some of my other videos, I mentioned that I had a, a fail on a recipe. Well, this was it. But I'm going to redo it tonight with a different set of instructions, kind of. It's the miso glazed salmon and bok choy. And uh, what happened the other night was I dropped to this one, which is you can substitute the frozen skinless salmon fillets it calls for with fresh, and you just change at what time you put the salmon in. So it calls for you to put it in, I think it is a step seven, and add a few more minutes to the cook time. Well, what I had happen, uh, let's just say, was not very desirable. It, it, it the, the, the salmon wasn't, it wasn't much the salmon as it was the rice. But long story short, I'm just going to leave that off and maybe try it again one day with fresh salmon. But right now, I just want to try their main recipe, and that's what I'm doing. So, this recipe calls for uh, a cup of jasmine rice. That's, that's not a problem. You can get that anywhere, uh, three-quarter cups of water. Now, I do have a little issue with that. I, think that's, I don't think that's enough water. I usually use a lot more but I'm going to follow their direction. Uh, it wants the four skinless, it, it asks for four frozen skinless salmon fillets. All right, well, it doesn't really say what kind, and I like all. So I got two coho salmon and two sockeye salmon. All right, so at that point, it, it, you know, it, it, all, that's, all this is easy to find. One of the problems with the recipe also that I ran into is this main ingredient, the miso glazed. The miso, I was able to find. Now, if you're going to do this recipe, I would start looking for that early in my, it, because I looked at a few stores and I couldn't find it. But I did do a research, some research on the, online and found that a good substitute or that miso is like an umami. So, and then it also recommended for a substitute if you can't find miso is soy sauce. So that's what I'm going to use in that because I never found the miso. The red, I did find a miso. It wasn't a red curry. I mean, it wasn't a red miso paste. So I'm just going to use this. And I, I did it the other night when I was doing the other one, and I had to use the same thing. And you and you make a paste with the butter. And I'll be honest with you, it it was excellent. And I may use it on some other things. It, you'll see what I mean when you make it with uh, mixed soy sauce with butter. So it also calls for a teaspoon of kosher salt. No problem. Uh, two tablespoons of butter softened, no problem. Uh, a, a quarter cup of murin. And uh, there that is. It's, it's not that hard to find. You can find that. And it's just a, a sweet cooking rice wine. So it's not a big deal to find that. And then uh, stuff like, uh, well, sesame oil, but it's a teaspoon. So you could use, I feel positive you could get by with whatever you have. But I do have sesame, so I'm going to use it. And then uh, sesame seeds, and that's just for a garnish. I mean... I, I have them, so I'm definitely going to use it. Uh, you know, they're not something you're going to use a lot. But that being said, oh, and the bok choy I found tonight. It's, it's not, I rinsed it off, as you can see. It's not the prettiest I've ever seen, but it was the right size, and the better looking one was a little bit bigger and didn't want to, didn't like it was going to fit my foodie well. So I'm getting a little lengthy on this explanation. So what I'm going to do is get some of this started, and I'm going to bring you back, and we're going to see how it turns out with the frozen. And I mean, they're fresh; they're right out of the freezer. I mean, they are, they are rocks. They're not; they're frozen. So we're going to make sure it'll work with that, and uh, I'll get that started and be right back. Y'all, hang on. Okay, so I have rinsed the jasmine, the one cup of jasmine and rice, and uh, now all I should do. It calls for is three quarter cups of water. And there it goes. And then we'll stir that around just a little bit. And this is exactly as they, their directions call for, rinsed rice. And I rinsed that rice uh, about five times till, till the water ran clear. So I'm gonna make sure it's all off the sides. All right, now, and by the way, I went with it calls for four four-ounce pieces. Well, these were six ounces each. 
So that's one piece of coho and two sockeye. And that, uh, they're around six ounces. That'd be 18, uh, six, 12, 18 ounces. So I'm, I'm, I'm two ounces over on what they asked for, but I can't believe that would matter. Now you put the, uh, the rack in its high position and uh, put the pressure lid on. Lock it, seal it, uh, pressure high for two minutes. Press start, and we are off and running. I'm gonna double check that. That lid looks like it's sitting a little crooked, so that right there looks fine. Now, once that comes up, to, or while that's cooking, I'm gonna be mixing the, uh, what should be the miso paste, but again, we're using this soy. But I'll be right back when that gets started and I get some of this uh, mixed up a little bit. Okay, so now for our knockoff miso paste, we're going to use our soy sauce. That's the two tablespoons of butter. Now, I ain't, it calls for two tablespoons of uh, miso paste, but I don't think you can do that with the soy. In fact, I know you can't. It'll get, it doesn't, it doesn't turn out well. You can't put two tablespoons of soy. It's not like the paste, in other words. So, I'm gonna mix that till it gets, and it's just look and feel, just like you see right here. I just don't want it to go all soy or, you know. So that's what I'm doing. And if you can see, let me look. That's getting pretty close to what I want. Still have to kind of get this hurrying a little bit because we've got to get the uh, bok choy ready. But that's pretty close. I'm gonna taste it in just a second, but I'm gonna let it also cool just a little bit because I microwaved it for about 10 seconds and uh, so it'll brush on with this. So I'm gonna get the bok choy cut up like it asked for and try and be ready when this is done. So be right back. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna broadcast this one because as I said, that three quarter cups of water with that rice, but that's what I got. So I'm gonna change this a little bit because I've got everything else ready. I'm gonna, I'm going to add some a little more water. I'm gonna take that rice out and the salmon, set the salmon out, and I'm gonna try and correct this a little bit. So there's what happened with three quarter cups of water. Be right back. And I should have showed you when I opened the lid, but there's what it looked like as I opened it. So I mean, it's just not enough liquid. I mean, I didn't feel like it was. I'm gonna do a, a cup of rice and a cup and a half of water. I, I think that'll be fine. So I wanna get that salmon off though right quick to keep it from cooking any further and it's it's warm but it'll be all right and as you can see the rice well it it's, it burned a little bit if not for that uh excellent coating i have but i'm not trying to i'm just saying i was skeptical and uh I'm gonna do, we're gonna do a different recipe. I'll be right back. The uh, miso glazed salmon and bok choy take three. All right, what I think happened is, and I mean, I know this sounds like a lot of water, but if you look at any of my pressure cooker videos, I put a lot of water with rice. Uh, two cups for a cup of rice is what I normally put. Well, you can see right here, if, if it'll focus and I don't, know that it will but it says right here three quarter one cup of jasmine rice and uh and three quarter cups of water well as i said i was very skeptical with that and uh i think it should have said one and three quarter now i don't know you know you don't see a lot of uh pressure cookers even advise more than one to one but i do i do one cup of rice and two cups of water unless it's a really large pot of rice all right as you can see the salmon got cooked a little bit it wasn't that big a deal i cleaned that out i was even able to hold this under the thing and, cl and clean off these legs pretty good so and one thing i forgot to do while i go was put rice on it so here's my answer one and three quarter cups of water and i'm going to add that now and this rice has been rinsed also i'm going to add the one and three quarter cups of water and that is a long way from what they had. Uh, three quarters of cup barely covered that with the rice, you know, at the bottom. 
Long story. Doesn't matter. We're going to try it and we'll see how the rice turns out. And this time, this is not, well, this will work. I'm going to add the, uh, I'm going to add some salt to the uh, salmon. And this is right there, should be plenty. That's around a teaspoon, if you ask me. So, I've already got the, uh, our, Kikkoman soy sauce and butter uh, paste made up. So all we need to do now is find my lid again. Here it is. Uh, put it on. Pressure high for two minutes again. There it is. Press start. Make sure it's sealed. And we'll see how that turns out. Hey, maybe I'll be wrong on the water because of the liquid in the salmon, which some of that did, you know, play, will play out in the rice. But I don't think, I don't think that'll matter. I just don't. I think it'll be perfect. But we're fixing to find out. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're coming up on the final, the countdown of the two minutes. And it is done. Now, I've already tossed the... Uh, the bok choy, and I took just the hearts of those out and put a quarter cup of the mirin and a teaspoon of the uh, sesame oil and tossed it around. And one other thing I'll say right quick, this is really, really good. And it looks almost like peanut butter, but it that's what it looks like after it, you know, sets back up. The butter sets back up with that. And I'm not sure what amount of soy that is. I just add it until, you know, you don't want it to break down. You just want it to stay a paste. So you just kind of add it. I'm a, it might have been a, a teaspoon and a half. I, I really don't know. You got to look and feel on it. That's really all there is to it. So I'm going to get this vented. And now we're going to, uh, once that finishes, we'll open it up and we're going to brush that on and add the bok choy. Be right back. Okay, so there went the pen. Now I am anxious to see how the rice looks after I added the, you know, the one and a quarter cup of water. But right now we have to worry about the uh, the salmon, and uh, it looks good. And I'm looking in there, and you can see too the rice looks fine to me. Uh, we'll see at the end. Uh, at this somewhere. All right, now we're supposed to pat the salmon dry with the paper towels. And that's as simple as it sounds. I'm just going to, I'm not going to try and lift them out of there and, and do anything with the other side. Just the side we're going to put the, uh, what should be the miso glaze, which is our knockoff butter and, and, uh, and soy. Again, the butter and soy is a recipe that I'm going to use again. I really mean it. I think if you make it, you'll see. Now, if I find the uh, the uh, red miso paste, I'm just as anxious anxious to try it the same way on other things. And like I said, when I go a turkey or something, I mean it has a real as soy would as you would think a real salty flavor and umami flavor with uh, butter. I mean <laughs> that's self-explanatory. So. Now, it, I only, as I said, I only used the hearts of those two stalks of bok choy, and I'm getting a little liberal with this, but it's running down in the rice, so I can't imagine it being a bad thing. So, I'm going to complete it out, but I know I'm making the video a little long, but that is the full ta two tablespoons of butter and the look and feel of the uh, soy. So, here comes the bok choy that you are to just lay in here around it, and I, I would, it, it's a little crowded, you know, already, and, I, and I, was, I, was, I was afraid of that, or I actually knew it from the other night. You know, I want the, the salmon to brown, so I don't want to get, I don't want to cover it, you know, so I just get creative and find a way to get the bok choy in there. And now if the bok choy is overlapping or, or layered, I don't think that's as big a deal as the salmon. 
So I'm not going to worry about if it layers and what, whatever. And I'm going to try and get all this in there, even if I had to break this last piece in half. And I am slinging it everywhere, making a mess, but for these purposes, I can't really do any better. And I'm going to make sure my salmon's not covered. I'm going to have to take just an extra second and push this right here. Because now, I gotta, I've got to wipe my hands off a little bit, and then we have to select a broil feature. And it, it, it really, let's see, it says close crisply select broil and set time to seven minutes. But honestly, it doesn't say a temperature. Or if it does, I haven't seen it. And I've really just noticed that, so I'm not positive. You're welcome to look with me. Gently pat, paper draw, crisping, lid, select broil, set time to seven minutes, and begin. So I got a feeling it's going to be 390. So we're going to uh, we're going to go to broil, which you know what that's that's right. You can't select there. That's my bad. My bad. Select uh, select broil. Set time to seven minutes. And there we are. Start stop, and then uh, select start stop to begin and checking the for doneness after five minutes. So that's where we are. And at two minutes, we'll open that up and look. Anyhow, I'll be right back. Okay, we're coming up on the two minutes. And we're about to look right now. And honestly, I think it can stand a little more. So we're going to let the two minutes finish out right now. Be right back. Okay, so coming up on the final two minutes. And we're going to let it go through its cool down feature. Now, I will say, I can kind of smell that bok choy, I think, burning just a little bit. So we'll let it go to where it says done. And we are there. And yet, the bok choy is doing a little more browning than I would like. But it looks like the salmon could use it a little more. But I'm not sure. I'm going to definitely remove the bok choy and look at it again. But let me get a plate to put that on, and I'll be right back. I'm going to alter it a little more. The bok choy is, is fine. It, it did get a little charred on the leaves, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. Still eat it. I'm going to add some air crisp time to that to try and brown it real quick. And I think the rice can stand it. I would like to stir the rice, and I probably should. But we're just going to do like two minutes of air crisp just to see if I can get that salmon to brown up just a little bit. I'm gonna go at 390. I'm gonna set it to two minutes and see what it looks like in just a minute. Coming right back. Okay, coming up on the two minutes of air crisp and uh, we're gonna see just how it looks. Let it go through its little cool down feature. Like I said, I think that helps cool that element and I think they do it to help maybe extend the life of the element. Let's see. Okay, that looks that looks a little better. I'm a little concerned with the rice, not, you know, it needs some attention. Now, this is kind of what I was looking for. Now, if you can see in their picture, it, you know, it has a little more char on it. Now, I could make that happen. I could make it happen with a torch. I've done it a, a, many times. It's not a big deal. It sounds like it is, but it's not. So, to get off of talking a bunch, I'm going to at least set this out and I'm going to stir that rice. So, uh, you know what? I'll come back in a minute. I'm going to have to move the camera so I can get in front of it better, but I'll be right back. Okay, so all I did was set the, the salmon out and there's what the rice looks like. This, this is really important. And if you can see, I mean, it looks fantastic that uh, the paste the butter and soy paste dripped on it and the juices from the salmon and as you can see there's nothing at all wrong with that rice and it certainly is nowhere near too much water i mean it's, it's perfect so i did alter the recipe and quite honestly it might be even best to remove that rice before what i'm fixing to do next but since i'm making this my recipe i'm not and I'm going to set this back in because I want a little more char on this right here just for, I don't know, it's, I'm sure it's done. It just looks a little better. And I want to see if the air crisp will put a little bit on it. As a matter of fact, it's probably cool enough for me to do with my hands. And uh, we're going to say, 
I'm going to say three minutes air crisp. And I'm going to say 400. Now, uh, three minutes time, and then we're really going to call it done either way. And, and honestly, if I were doing this on a normal time, I would take, if I was worried more concern, as concerned with the looks of it, and, and I am sometimes, I would take my torch that I, I mean, literally, it's nothing, it's no special torch. You can buy special torches, but you can also just get one at Home Depot that you just touch off on it with a torch, and it does that right there. But we're going to try and do it with this. If this doesn't do it, we're going to eat it like it is. I'm sure it's done, and I'm looking forward to it. And I'll be right back. Okay, so here comes the uh, final, the final cook time. We're going to we're going to call it done here. And I may let it rest a minute, but I'm not cooking it anymore. I mean, honestly, I considered going out and getting my torch to, <coughs> to show <coughs> everyone how how easy it is. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> But there it is, and that's where I'm leaving it, and it honestly, it looks fine just like it is. So we're going to leave it just like that. I'm going to let it rest just a few minutes, and I will be back one more time. Okay, for, for whatever reason, and because this video has kind of spiraled out of uh, time constraints and uh, everything about it, I'm going to show you what I do. I mean, I'm, I'm sure... A lot of restaurants do this. I'm sure they did it in that picture. They probably didn't use a, a torch from Ace Hardware or Home Depot or anywhere. They probably have one that's designed for food, but hey, a flame is a flame. And all you want to do is keep the tip of the, t of the flame on your food. I do it all the time on steaks, on all kinds of things. So I'm just going to do one of them. But I want to show you, because if you continue to try and do it the way we are doing it with that air crisp, you're going to overcook this food really bad. So, all you do is you just lay it up here, and you'll, it'll act up just a little bit, but in just a minute, you'll see it start browning or, or charring somewhat. And it'll give it that restaurant look. And I'm just going to do it to one because I've got it in this pan. I would recommend you move it maybe out of this pan into a black iron skillet or something. But as you can see, even though it pops and acts up, and I really don't think I'm hurting my pan, but if, if you, you know, you would want to move it out of there, honestly. But look at that piece. I mean, that looks like what you're going to, what a re, when you go to a restaurant, it looks like that. That's what they did. I assure you. They're not doing it, you know, most likely. Well, first of all, they're not using a ninja foodie. Most likely, they might be. But anyhow, we're going to get that on a plate and see how it looks and tastes. Be right back. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, we want to look at the rice again. And I don't think I need to tell you, there's nothing wrong with this rice. And now it's, it's well, I did five minutes probably of uh, the rest and then the resting time so I mean there's nothing wrong with the rice it's I promise you that flavor is gonna be great with all those things on it and again this videos kind of went out of time constraints and all so I'm gonna get some on the plate and we're gonna eat it like I said a while ago I just wanted to show you the rice before I pulled it out of the pot but there you go okay so with all the alterations of the recipe which is pretty much add water to your rice maybe a typo on the three-quarter cup. I, I think it may be. Long story short, here's theirs, and here's mine. Now, theirs looks a little better, but not much. Uh, I, my bok choy got a little crispy, but I've tasted it, and it's fantastic. It really is that mirin, and uh, it gives it a sweet flavor, and, and that's what it is, a sweet rice wine, and it, it's really great, but I want to tell you something. The rice with that umami butter flavor that dripped on it is absolutely some of the best rice. I, again, it's really, really good. The salmon, is it, it's, a, it's a slight overcooked because of all the time. What I should have done at the first time I raised it was did the torch trick the first time I lifted it. I mean, it was done probably at that point, and I haven't tasted it, but 
I'm, I love salmon, and I'm sure it is, especially with that uh, umami butter trick, which I'll guarantee you, I'll use again on something. If you if you try it, I think you will too. And I even have the uh, sesame seeds. And it is a little overcooked. But it's got a great flavor, and I know how to fix it. I know all I have to do is shorten that some of those times at the end and uh, just finish it with a torch. And uh, a lot of people, and I'm not recommending you do, if you're not, especially if you're not comfortable with one, it doesn't matter if it doesn't brown that well. Just a lot of places you go or you see in pictures, that's what they've done. And uh, it's a great method. There's nothing wrong with it. I use it uh, doing sous vide eating steaks and stuff. Long story short, <laughs> the bottom line is everything here is it's a really good recipe. Other than they've got a typo. That's my opinion. So anyhow, in the kitchen with jelly, 007.com, and I appreciate you watching my video. And please come back to see me. Like and subscribe. Share all of the above. And uh, try you some salmon. Maybe get venture, adventurous and try you using a torch a little bit on it. The rice is going to blow your mind. It's excellent. So is the bok choy. So, y'all have a good night. Come back to see me. Bye-bye.